Hey folks, welcome back once again to Adopt Africa. This is Chris. And today's topic is another one of those really strange stories coming out of Africa. What am I talking about? I'm talking about an unusual claim that came out of the terrorism trial taking place in Rwanda. Major Kalixta Sankara, as he's best known, but his proper name is actually Kalixta Nsambimana, is on trial for terrorism in Rwanda. And he claims that Zambia's president, Edgar Lungu, paid his National Liberation Front, the FLN, $150,000 deposit with a promise of a $1 million payoff to help oust the government of Paul Kagame in Kigali. Now, never mind the fact that this is quite a bizarre claim. It's also keeping pace with claims he made last year when first arrested. Sankara, as he's best known, was arrested in April of 2019. Afterwards, he pled guilty to 16 charges. In December of 2018, he had claimed credit for setting afire many tourist buses or passenger buses in the in Yungwe Forest. Now, this is important because that is a location where international tourists go to observe mountain gorillas. It has a major impact on foreign currency coming into the region. And as a consequence, many Western countries, including Australia, Germany, and others, uh, cautioned their citizens from traveling to the region as a consequence of this terrorist action. Now, in those attacks on buses, two people were killed and many others were injured. The FLN is one of several rebel groups opposed to the continued rule of Paul Kagame in Rwanda. Now, Kagame has been in office since his uh, rebel group invaded from Uganda in 1994 in an effort to oust the genocideers and successfully chase them out of the country into the eastern Congo, into the Kivu region. As a consequence, um, his government and his forces assume power in Rwanda and have been in power ever since, since 1994, ladies and gentlemen. Quite a long time, 26 years since the genocide and since his party took over. Kagame shows no signs of leaving office anytime soon or little interest. He seems quite disinterested in leaving office. And so Paul Kagame seems to become infected with the big man disease in Africa yet again. Yet another example of it. Now, I'm not criticizing the rule of the country. It's a safe country, which is modern, and there's development, and the country's wealth is increasing. They have fantastic telecommunications. They have a robust business sector. Volkswagen has built a plant there to assemble motor vehicles in Rwanda and many other promising things. But it's also known for draconian governance and also for the fact that it's essentially a single-party state with no one else able to assume power. But beyond that, my real criticism, Kagame here, it has nothing to do with this uh, terrorism trial, but much more to do with the fact that outside of Rwanda, ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you this question. Who are the other Rwandan politicians that you've heard of, that you know of? Now, obviously, some Rwandans know who they are, but most of us around the world don't know anything about the internal politics of Rwanda or who the likely successor to Paul Kagame will be. And that's what I'm talking about, the big man disease in Africa. So... What happens after Kagame goes? Whether he just leaves office, resigns, is ousted, what happens? Who takes charge and what will happen? Will Rwanda continue on the path of development that it's been on for the past couple of decades? Who knows? And we don't know because of Kagame's approach to leadership and his rule of the country. Now, when he was arrested in April of 2019 and and, and pled guilty to charges in May of 2019, Sankara claimed that he had been collaborating with the Ugandan People's Defense Force in Uganda and also with Burundi's intelligence services. Now, that intelligence service, that's quite an inflammatory claim, quite interesting. This is something that's been uh, conjecture for a long time. Yovari Museveni's government has long claimed that uh, the southwestern portion of Uganda has been undermined by rebels coming in from the DRC and that they're supported by others. And Rwanda, of course, has long claimed that Uganda and Burundi are seeking to undermine Kagame's government, which is interesting because, of course, Kagame famously was a, a cohort and ally of Yuvari Museveni during the independence movement, the effort to overthrow the previous government in Uganda. Kagame was part of the forces that fought in Uganda with Ugandans against their government. And he and Museveni were fast friends for a long time, but have only fallen out over the past decade or so and now have strenuous disagreements with each other. So when Sankara claimed at his trial that he was in league and collaborated with the UPDF and with Burundi Intelligence Service, this was quite an inflammatory statement. And now here we are a year later, a little over a year later, and now Sankara claims that 
the president of Zambia gave him a down payment of $150,000 with a promise of $1 million US dollars if he helped oust Paul Kagame. To what end? What does Zambia benefit from Paul Kagame leaving office? How does Edward Lungu benefit from this? Is this legitimate? Is this conspiracy? Is this just an effort to deflect by Kagame, the courts, and or Sankara? It's quite strange. Now, in response to the statement from Sankara last year, when he said that he had been in league with the UPDF, Kagame closed the border crossings along its border with Uganda in 2019 as a consequence of this. Now, the FLN itself is the armed wing of the Rwandan Movement for Democratic Change, or the MCRD, by its French acronym. So let me say a little bit here about what actually Sankara said in his trial recently, just a few days ago. Now, I waited about four days to report on this story to see what else unfolded because it's quite bizarre, ladies and gentlemen. But um, Sankara said, uh, he said, towards the end of 2017, Zambian President Edgar Lungu agreed to support opposition politician and leader of the MRCD, that would be the Rwanda Movement for Democratic Change, the political wing of the FLN, to topple President Kagame and immediately offered $150,000 for the cause. President Lungu was in Rwanda for a two-day state visit in February of 2018. Now, he's quoted in court as saying, in early 2019, before I was arrested, one Nsinguvuma Apollinaire, a leader of the PDR, one of the many political parties that formed the MRCD, traveled to Zambia to meet Lungu to discuss how he would offer them more support. That's what he told the court. Now, in response to this, uh, the Special Assistant for Press and Public Relations, Isaac Chimape, uh, to President Lungu, made the following statement in Zambia. State House has noted with great dismay reports in the local and international media of the alleged submission made to Rwanda's High Court for international and cross-border crimes that His Excellency Dr. Edgar Chagwa Lungu, President of the Republic of Zambia, allegedly provided financial resources to a named Rwanda organization to launch attacks in Rwanda. State House would like to categorically refute these claims and wishes to state unequivocally that these allegations are false and must be treated with the contempt they deserve. The governments and people of Zambia and Rwanda continue to enjoy strong and fraternal relations on mutual respect and a common purpose based on shared value and principles. This raises the question, is it legitimate? Is it real? Did this really happen? And if so, why? It beggars, it beggars the imagination what exactly Lungu will be gained from this. Now, Lungu himself, uh, let's talk a little bit about him. He was uh, in the government of his predecessor, Michael Sata. And uh, when Michael Sata died unexpectedly in October of 2014, the vice president at the time, Guy Scott, became president for 90 days until elections could be held. Now, interesting uh, footnote in history, a little bit of trivia here. Uh, Michael, Guy Scott, I should say, Guy Scott is... Africa's most recent white head of state since F.W. de Klerk left office and became the deputy president under after the 1994 election in South Africa. The f most recent non-Arab white head of state in Africa was Guy Scott, who served for 90 days approximately when um, his predecessor, his president, Michael Sata, died in office. So there you go with Guy Scott. A little bit of trivia there. But what happened was that Lungu ran for the position against uh, Hichilema, and Hichilema... Neither one of them got 50%, but in this special election, they didn't have to have 50% of the vote. So with 48.33% of the vote, or winning by just 27,000 votes, Lungu became president in January of 2015. Now, he held that position for a year until the term expired for Michael Sata. So when the term expired, he had to run again in 2016. He ran in that election, and he won that election with just over 50% of the vote, which helped him avoid a runoff if you get less than 50% of the vote, you must have a second round so that one candidate gets 50%. So in that election, Lungu defeated Hichilema once again. Both candidates, interestingly, increased their percentage of the vote. Lungu had 48.33% in 2015. A year later, he got 50.35%. But Hichilema went from 46.67 to 47.63, so gained a percentage there. Nonetheless, Lungu became president um, in his own right, in his own term, in 2016. What does he have to gain? Why would he be involved in conflict or trying to oust Paul Kagame? What disputes are going on there? It is interesting um, that this sort of thing comes up now and it's talked about. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's kind of what's going on. That's the story. Sankara has made a claim that not only was he in league with the UPDF in Uganda, as well as the Burundi Intelligence Service, but now he claims Zambia, um, the president of Zambia, also gave money to help oust Paul Kagame. Whatever the case is, it sounds like uh, whether it's real or not, a lot of people are quite unhappy with Paul Kagame. 
and his governance in Rwanda, which is ironic given it's been um, benevolent governance, governorship in many respects, or governance over the past few decades. But nonetheless, the big man disease has crept in and he has not left office and leaves himself vulnerable to questions about his value of democracy and governance. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Sankara's claims against Lungu, the government of Zambia, denies this. Sankara claims it's true, and his case continues. We shall see what happens in Rwanda. The strange case of Sankara, Lungu, Rwanda, and Zambia. Folks, if you enjoy this video or found it informative or thought-provoking, I ask you consider becoming a subscriber if you're not already. How do you do that? Well, you smash that subscription button right down there. And be sure to toggle that little bell icon because the bell icon is important. If you don't toggle the bell icon, you may not get updates for future videos, live streams, and my special guests who come on my program for streams. And if you've got comments, feel free to leave the comments. I do my best to read all comments and respond where appropriate. And finally, I ask that you smash or tap that like button right down there because the more likes of a video as a percentage of views, the more likely it is that it will be shared by YouTube so that others can watch the content and comment on it. I thank you for your time, your patience, and your patronage here on Chris White Africa. Thank you so much.